Welcome to this introductory video on using VIP Insights for Maitla County. On the agenda for today, we're going to first introduce Prices IQ as a company, then we're going to look at the VIP platform, and then we will go into detail on VIP Insights. So who is Process IQ? So Process IQ offers advanced instruments, process control, and software solutions that can all be commissioned and operated remotely. Process IQ has been operating out of Australia for almost a decade now, and we have installed various milling, flotation, and leaching technologies to clients across the globe. So what does Process IQ offer the market? First off, we have a partnership with Scanman International and we provide the elemental analyzers on conveyor belts. And then secondly, mole slicer, which helps you to see what's going on inside the mole. And recently we have released the new tri-slicer, which is an upgrade on the mole slicer. Flow cam for real-time measurement of flotation trough velocities on individual flotation cells. And then Sinoprobe, online cyanide analysis, C2 meter, online carbon concentration measurements for carbon in leach and carb carbon in pulp processes. And then our suite of advanced process control systems, firstly the mole star, then the float star, and finally the leach star. And then we have the VIP platform, which is our data platform, which we are going to discuss in a bit more detail. So what is the VIP historian? So any processing facility has hundreds up to thousands of sensors. They generate billions of data points per annum. It's of utmost importance to store this information in order to derive insights, which can be used to improve the operation. The VIP historian is built upon the latest technologies, allowing a true time series historian optimized for speed and versatility of analysis. In conjunction with the VIP historian, Process IQ also developed an Excel plugin, which integrates with the VIP historian in order to do big data analysis directly from Excel. And then we have VIP Vision. So VIP Vision is a platform where you can analyze the data from your time series historian efficiently. And any sensor or, com or combination of sensors with calculations or just raw data can be plotted with various types of visualizations and dashboards. You can also do things like alerting and event triggers. And then VIP Vision is used by all engineers from process to mechanical to solve specific problems such as condition monitoring and milling optimization. And then finally, we have the VIP Insights uh, software solution. So VIP Insights is a unique product that was developed with the inputs of the business improvement and metallurgy departments with, within multiple production environments. It focuses on business intelligence, uh, like reporting and analysis, and it enables you to do a, what is called the one version of the truth uh, site-wide. It gives you custom views for each level of the business from the general manager who are interested in long-term performance all the way down to the operator level who looks at hourly trends. You can integrate with any process historian, mining systems, spreadsheets, flats, files, or web-based databases. So now we are going to go into a bit more detail on VIP Insights and how it can be used as a metal accounting system. This is the typical life of a metallurgist. Spreadsheets, more spreadsheets, and even more spreadsheets all over the company, from servers to personal computers. So what are the problems with this? There are disparate data sources all across the business, from mining to safety to the labs. Duplication of data is also a problem, where it is sometimes a pain to understand which spreadsheet has the latest data in it. And then dirty data where the data you are working with are difficult to format and manipulate to get to the answers you are looking for. I'm pretty sure you have had to deal with this on a week to week basis where you need to generate some report or insights and you cannot get your hand on the data you need. You are provided with garbage data that you need to clean and spend a lot of time to get it in the right format that you are looking for. And then finally, it is difficult and time consuming to get your hands on tailored reports and analytics that are required for you to be competent 
at your job. So what are the implications of this? A lot of time is spent generating reports that could be better spent elsewhere. If you come to work on a Monday morning, it would be better to focus on the learnings over the weekend and what operating parameters to change compared to generating reports on Excel, which are most of the time not even looked at. Doing the same thing over and over kind of sucks in a big way as it becomes just another eight to five job. To keep things interesting, it is better to spend time on innovating and improving operations compared to generating reports. The repetitiveness and loss of time also becomes very frustrating and probably results in overworking and inefficient problem solving. Nothing is more frustrating than opening a spreadsheet and wondering who tampered with it and who changed that formula. Many times it's difficult to trust the data you are working with. And then metallurgy can be quite complex, as you know, and without the proper data systems to assist you, to assist you it can become difficult to solve problems critical to the business especially with multi-dimensional environments such as milling and flotation circuits. And then finally, due to the lack of data systems, it results in a lack of direction for the company where it is not always that easy to understand where money should be spent or what problems the next project should tackle. So what are the solution that we are offering you? The solution we offer you is to be able to easily integrate data across your business it allows easy reporting and analytics to enable any person to access it with a click of a button. It's to move away from Excel, allow for easy data capturing specifically for critical data such as downtime events, and then work with an easy to use platform that any employee in a business can access and use. So the benefits of such a system are not always that obvious as it's not like an advanced process control system where an improvement in throughput can be immediately seen. However, from experience, it is typically seen that better and more efficient use of data specifically around metallurgy can help you better understand material losses and gains, empower you to stabilize your operation, reduce costs, increase production, increase recovery, and reduce downtimes. It also allows you to optimally budget for next year to efficiently spend your capital. And then finally, it's to have a more happy and job satisfied workforce. So now it's time to do a little demo. So what are we going to discuss is, is the results of what you see in front of you. So basically we created an Excel spreadsheet with some, uh, with some data uh, for, that you would typically get from a lab, assays and production data. And then we, we specify the monthly budget and target data for the online capture interface. And then we create calculations for recovery, dry tons, copper in feed, copper in conch or, or copper produce, copper in tails, conch dry tons and tails dry tons. And then we, re we create a summary report and, and a dashboard. So normally we would run through this step by step, you know, in order to train, uh, to, to, to train the people who will be using this. But in, in this case, we don't want to bore you with that detail. So we are only going to show you the results. This is an example of a summary. So what is a summary? A summary is a collection of KPIs that are categorized, for example, in this case, by production and assays with a trend and with some statistics and actual values, budget values and target values. So in this case, you can see the previous day actual value, the budget, the variance are shown the target and the target variance are shown, the month to date actual budget variance and the year to date actual budget variance. These kinds of reports are used on a day to day basis in metallurgical departments where they need to look at the overall performance of the business from a production point of view, look at the assays, look at things like recoveries over different sections and so on. And this gives you a very nice overview of the trend of what's been happening the last couple of days, as well as how we are faring to the budget or to the target that we are measuring. It's very important to, to always measure yourself against what is, what is expected from you 
as then you will know if you are performing uh, per, per standard. All right, so the question is how difficult is it to create these reports in, uh, in uh, VIP Insights? And I'm going to show you that it's quite easy and quite simple to do so. So let's recreate this report so that you can see how easy it is to do so. So we go to Summaries, click on Add. We call this Met Accounting Demo 2. We click on Create. You can see the dash, uh, the summary was created over there. So we click on Met Accounting Demo 2. And now we see a blank page in front of us. So in order to edit this page, we need to click on the Edit button. On the left side is all the measures in, the li in, in your measures library that you can actually use to create your summary. So what we will do is we will search for the Met Accounting data the Met Accounting Demo data, and then we select all of them, and we click Save. So now we see all the KPIs we have selected, and the default columns that were given were the unit, the trend, the previous day actual budget variance, the monthly date actual budget variance, and the year-to-date actual budget variance. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create two categories, and then we're going to categorize and order the KPIs. Then we will see how it looks. So we click on edit again, we go to categories, we add two categories, we call the first one production, and the second one we can call assays. Then we go to measure settings, and in here we can assign categories uh, for the measures, and we can also order, order the measures by drag and dropping them. So let's first assign the category. So Copper con grade is an assay, copper peak grade is an assay, copper in conch is production. Copy in feed is production, copy in tails is production, copper tails grade is an assay, and dry tons production, moisture production, recovery production, and finally wet tons production. So let's move the assays to the bottom by dragging and dropping them. And we would like to see the feed grade first, and then we can order the production KPIs by moving the dry tons to the top. And then recovery, copy and con, copy and feed, uh, and maybe the wet tons we can put below dry tons. And then we click on save. All right, so there we have it. Now the measures or the KPIs were categorized into production and assays, and the order of appearance was also changed. So, what if you want to change these columns? Let's go back to edit, we go to features, and here we can turn them on and off. So the latest value, we would like to look at the target and the target deviation as well. And then we would maybe like to view the week to date as well for the actual budget and the deviation. So we just select which ones we would like to look at and we click save. And there you have it. You can see the, the week to date was added. And yeah, and, and, and the other ones that we would we wanted to look at. All right, so this is how quick and easy and simple it is to create your own summary. And uh, so any person in an organization can create these kinds of summaries, which are very useful from a day to day production management point of view. Let's look at dashboards. So what is a dashboard? A dashboard is a collection of visualizations. And VIP Insights have multiple visualizations that you can use and a very user-friendly way in which you can build your own dashboard. So let's open up an, an example dashboard, Met Accounting Demo. So here on the left side, you can, sh you can see gauges. So a gauge is a way in order to compare different values, for example, the actual versus the budget value. In this case, it's the daily dry tons mold. And on the right side, you can see the same KPI in the control chart trend. The gauge itself, you can configure different steps or color steps, depending on what values you deem to be safe, unsafe, or critical, or bad, 
good and, and very good, depending on the way you would like to, to look at them. So we have the dry tons mold, the copper in feed, the copper feed grade, and the copper con grade, and the copper tails grade, configured here with trends. And here at the bottom, we have a, a, a different section called production cumulatives, showing the cumulative graphs for dry tons mold, copper produced, and recovery. So let's say we would like to edit this dashboard. We click on edit dashboard. And it gives you this interface in which you can edit the dashboard. So just to give a quick explanation here at the top, that plus sign is to add a new group. For example, we have the production group and we have the production cumulatives groups. And that is that button is to edit some settings of the dashboard. If you go to a group, that plus is to add a chart inside the group or to edit the group or to delete the group or to move it up and down. And then on a specific chart itself, that button is to change the chart type to edit the chart or delete the chart, copy or paste the chart. So let's add a new chart here at the bottom. Let's say, for example, we would like to add another cumulative chart for a different KPI. So on this group itself, we click on add chart. There at the bottom, it produced a new chart for us. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the data of this one and paste it here. So we click on copy and we click on paste. So what you see is the width of and the height of the chart change to the same as the one of recovery. What I would like to confirm is that we have a cumulative chart selected. So let's click on edit chart type and you can see all the chart types that are available here on the left side. And we can see the cumulative chart was chosen or selected. So the other charts available are the gauge chart, a line chart, a control chart, histogram, a cumulative chart, a combo chart, and a scatter chart. And then finally a custom line and bar chart. All right, so let's select the cumulative chart. Then I'm gonna edit the chart. I click on edit chart. And I need to make sure that a measure is selected for this. So I click on that button and then select the measure. Let's go to meta counting and let's select, uh, let's say we would like to look at um, copper congrade. All right, let me just click save. And there you have it. Our new chart was configured. It's as easy and simple as that. If you would like to move things around, we can just zoom out a little bit and then we can just drag and drop. So let's say we would like to exchange uh, these ones. We just drag and drop them like that. Very easy to use, very intuitive user interface and extremely powerful. Any, any person in the business can very quickly build their own dashboards without much effort. To build this entire dashboard in front of you would probably take five minutes of your time. And that's how easy it is. If we are done editing the dashboard, we click on view dashboard and we can see the original view of the dashboard. Data capture. What kinds of data can you capture and how does it work? So first off, let's discuss events. You actually see the events page in front of you. So let me select company A and then area process, dry section, downtimes, and then I'm going to download the data we have in the database. So this data is just sample data. So don't be too concerned about the actual reasons that were selected here or the kinds of events. So what you see in front the events are the from, the to, the duration, the symptom, and the root cause. So why is this important? First off, it's important to separate the symptoms from the root causes. So in normal operations, those two are normally mixed up, and it's difficult to know if the reason that we captured for the event was a symptom seen by the operator, or if it was actually the root cause that were locked after the investigation was done by the mechanical or reliability or condition monitoring engineers. And why is this important? It's important to understand the percentage of your events 
where investigations were actually done and to try and get that to 100% or as close as possible to 100%. And the only way you can track that is if your symptoms and your root causes are separated. So a symptom will probably be the first event that are captured by the plant operator. So let's say, for example, if the, if the tank level was high and that caused, you know, that caused the feed pump um, to stop, that would be the symptom and that would be captured by the operator. But after an investigation, they might actually find that, hey, you know, there was something else that caused that tank level to rise above critical limits. And that would be your root cause. And if all of your root causes are probably uh, properly captured, that gives you the right and the proper data to actually understand the shortcomings of your operation and to know what you need to budget for for the coming year and to accurately spend your, you know, the capital that was allocated um, to your department. So let me show you uh, how this works. So if we click on, for example, root cause here, it opens up. Uh, where you can select the equipment, so let's say, for example, CV001, you can say, well, okay, mechanical, and you can say, well, the roller was faulty, and you just select the reason. It's as simple as that. You can easily define those reasons, and you can define them to as many levels as you would like to. So we have had clients before where we have defined literally 2,000 different reasons, you know, uh, specifically for, for the mechanical failures. And so you go down to the nuts and the bolts of what actually happened and what actually failed and you sit with data worth gold um, in, in its value uh, because that data will steer, it will, it will give you a very good direction of where you need to spend your money and allocate your budget and when where you actually need to go as a company to improve availability, improve throughput, and, and also obviously actually improve recovery of your operation. So after you have defined your, or captured your root causes, and by the way, these events can either be, you can actually manually create a new event or you can automatically generate these events using the same software. So if you have a SCADA system or an historian, uh, we can, you can actually configure these events to, to watch for certain conditions to be met to trigger these downtime events. So let's say, for example, uh, the feeder to your crusher, the speed drops to zero, then obviously, you know, the crusher is down and that will trigger the event. When that feeder picks up again to 50%, you know, the crush is running again and then you close that event. But you can create new events, you can merge events, and here are the metadata editor and the reason editor, which I'm going to show you now. But before we do that, I want to show you, if you click on the event here, you can actually split the event. So this is important. Uh, Metallurgists will understand why that's necessary. You can lock the event. So let's say both symptom and root cause was captured. Everybody's happy. You can lock the event, meaning nobody can change this. Only the super admin can unlock it. And you can delete the event. And you can also, also actually edit uh, the event if, if your findings are that the start and the end date for that event is not accurate. If you click on the view report, it will actually show you, you can actually generate a report, a downtime report uh, for, the, for the from and the to and the specific events that you are looking for. And this report will contain your availability, utilization, runtimes, unplanned events, mean time between failures, mean time to repairs. It will show you your top downtimes and it will show you like trends of availability, utilization and runtime. But this is not the only report that you have to use. You can also, using the measures functionality in VIP Insights, you can actually create your own unique KPIs and those KPIs can be used in the dashboarding functionality. So you can create your own unique uh, reports that are tailored for your specific environment. Going back to events, if you go to metadata editor, this is where you can actually define the metadata for, or, and, uh, for, for your events. So here's, for example, the event types, the operations in your company, the areas, the sections, uh, uh, for example, dry section, wet section, the time codes, very important. What time codes do you use in your company? Uh, and, and what time model category is associated with that? The time model categories have things like operating time, slow operating time, lost time, unscheduled downtime, scheduled downtime, and non-controllable time. So this will actually be used 
to, to calculate things like availabilities and utilizations. But what's nice is you can use the time code for your own company and you can define your own company's uh, time code uh, labels. And then reason categories, what do you have like mechanical, electrical, instrumentation? Uh, what equipment types do you have like conveyors, bulbs, cane crushers, and then the actual equipment in your company? For example, you have, let's say you have crusher 001 and crusher 002. They belong to the dry section and a crusher 2 is a cone crusher and crusher 1 is a gyratory crusher. And why this is important is because the reasons are defined according to equipment type. So you define the reasons, the reasons for conveyors, for feeders and for cone crushers and so on. And that obviously makes the whole system very efficient and it makes it very applicable to, to disciplines like condition monitoring. If you want to create new reasons, you go to reason editor and in here you can actually specify new reasons. So currently we are looking at downtime, we are looking at root cause reasons. So by the way, as mentioned previously, you can split your root cause and your symptom uh, reason trees. And uh, so if you want to create a new reason, we just click on the add reason. And in here we can, for example, say, well, uh, for mechanical, um, in a, let, let's say, for example, uh, for instrumentation, uh, if we go to, you know, if, if, if we go to, uh, let's say, for example, the ball mold, you can just, you can just add a new reason here, whatever it might be. All right, and you can see there's, there's your new reason that we added. Simple as that. And then you just click on save. All right, so that is events. Next up, uh, we, I would like to show you measures. So as I've shown you in, in the, uh, before, if you go to measures library, you can actually see the measures here on the left side that are defined uh, for, for your company. What you can also do is uh, you can define these measures to be able to capture data for those measures manually. So if you go to measures, you can actually see for metal accounting demo, for all the important measures, we have actually specified that those measures uh, for the budget and the target should be manually captured um, using the same interface. So currently, and they were specified to be captured in on the month. So if we pull all the data from the system, Let's say from the beginning of the year, you can see there are the monthly wet tons budget, the copper feed grade, the copper tails grade, cong grade, as well as moisture. And these values were already captured. If I click on the value, you can actually see the value history. So you can see uh, admin captured the value initially. So if you would like to change it, let's say, well, we find the budget is actually bad. And the comment would be, uh, let's say, calculation mistake. Um, you need to provide a comment to actually show who changed the value. So you click on edit value and now we can see the value changed red and we click on save and now the value turned orange. So the orange means there are history associated with this value and you can actually see the value history as the value changed. Um, so if some person actually came and changed the value, that audit trail is actually there and you can actually um, do an investigation to understand why the value was changed. And what you can also do is you can lock the value. So once everybody's happy with the value, you lock the value and then nobody can come and change the value again. Only the super administrator will be able to unlock it so that you can change the value again. So you can define these capture sheets in any format for as many KPIs as you would like to for any value type like actual budget target and for any time frame period. It's a very valuable tool to have as in any metal accounting environment, you always have some form of manual data that you need to capture. And it's nice to do this outside of Excel and get the data directly into a database and make it auditable and make it traceable and also be able to, to lock the values and to have total control over the integrity of your data. Let's look at some practical examples of how VIP Insights can be practically used to drive positive change in your business. The first example shows a statistical control chart of the standard deviation of wet tons mold. This analysis was done in order to determine the effect of a change in the type of steel balls used in the sag mold. 
The area on the left side shows normal behavior according to configured control limits. In the middle to the right side is a clear, uh, process is clear from the change in trend as well as the data points showing different shapes and colors. This indicates the process changes statistically, the distribution fundamentally changed. This change obviously happened for the better and this can be used as evidence for the plant manager or the general manager to show that the new steel balls improve the stability of the cycle. Not only that, the improvement is statistically significant, meaning it is not due to natural process variation. Second, this is an hourly scatter plot of sag mole power versus sag mole weight, with the point colors representing speed of the mole and the point size representing the throughput. Furthermore, a parabola is fitted to the data points with the starting position set at the weight when the mole is empty. This gives a textbook power to load curve, which can be used to estimate at what weight and speed a mole should operate at. It's clear that the top colors shows the mole greater than 9 RPM and the blue dots, the mole at less than 8.5 RPM. Technically, different parabolas can be fitted if the data is filtered based on speed. This analysis shows that the sag mole is operating on the left side of the parabola peak, which is a good thing. It also shows that there might be some room to increase the mole weight by increasing the throughput. Then the next analysis, this shows a histogram of flotation grade for train one and two. It's clear that train two's histogram is shifted to the left with a mean less than that of train one. Thus, some form of mineral mineralogical segregation is happening in the cycling system. Further investigation on the cycling feed pumps show the following histogram. Train two is yet again shifted to the left with an obvious lower volume compared to train one. This is not good for the following reasons. Train one is receiving considerable more volume potentially affecting the recovery due to reduction in resonance time. And wear and tear are normally exponentially distributed and thus the 20% extra volume pumped by train one could have a negative impact on component life. To understand why this is happening will require further investigation. However, first guess would be to look at the site and sump. Segregation is probably happening due to inefficient mixing due to too little resonance time or turbulence. This is a typical example for a project that can be launched to look at improving the situation. And then the last analysis, let's look at the concentrate quality versus carbon content. It's, it's quite clear from a scatter plot that the final concentrate grade shows a tight correlation to carbon concentration. Although obvious that there would be a correlation, it's important to see this fact and that the optimization of this fact could save millions of dollars in transportation costs and quality penalties. So on the right side, is a control chart of the carbon in final concentrate. The metallurgist should follow the strain as closely as possible and launch a project to try and suppress the carbon in roughness. So although the dated visualizations itself won't bring about any improvement, it could be the evidence required to convince your superiors to bring about positive change or to assist with or to assist you on a day-to-day -day basis. It's a way of work. Bring facts to the table, not opinions. Without proper data systems, this is not possible without spending a considerable amount of time. Asking the IT department to do these things for you would take a considerable amount of time as well and frustrations and effort. VIP Insights enables any engineer to help themselves with analysis required to excel at their job.